All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to do one of these clashes. I'm going to share my code, uh, although I think uh, nobody was interested in what I had written. I don't, I don't think there was anything there, uh, but let's let's play this again. All right, so I'm going to uh, just see how long it takes for somebody to jump on here, and we don't need to have a full roster of eight people. Uh, even if there's only a couple people on here, we'll go ahead and launch the launch the clash, and um, you know we'll we'll work on this together. We'll work on the I'll, I'll click launch clash. So this is this is called the IDE. Uh, so okay, this one's going to be reverse mode. So this is called the IDE over on the right side here. This is where we're going to type in the code, and this over here on the left is what the output should look like. Um, and it, it says this game is reverse. You do not have access to the statement. So we're not getting any directions on this. In other words, they're not going to give us directions. What we have to do is look at what's here and then try to uh, create the, uh, uh, you know, whatever algorithm is going to solve this thing. Uh, we have to give it that output. So uh, does anybody have an idea of what's going on from? Hey, Jesse. Yes. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, my apologies. I just couldn't see the the video, and I I kind of got kicked out for a couple of minutes because school Wi Fi is just not very good. Is it blurry? You're showing me to like join uh, no, you guys. I, I I didn't really hear uh, a, a part of that. Is it is it blurry for you, or is it uh, blacked out, or what what's happening with the video? Sebastian, can you hear me? Hey, yeah, yeah. The, the school Wi-Fi is just not very. <laughs> um, it, 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 so you're, I'm kind of cutting in and out. Is that what's happening? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just just try to um, keep up as best you can. Uh, again, you'll get to watch the recording, so that'll hopefully help with that. Uh, is everybody else able to hear me? Okay. Yes. Hey, All right. All right, cool. So uh, yes. so we've we've got uh, f uh, 13 minutes left to solve this thing. Does anybody have an idea of what could be going on from this first image to this second image? Like what change do you think is being required here? Because they look pretty similar, right? The eyes? The eyes, yeah. It looks like the eyes go, go from being open eyes right here with O's to being uh, X's over here, right? So I don't really see any other changes as I'm looking through the, um, as I'm looking through these. And I don't know if they're all uppercase or lowercase either. I think they might be, I think they might all be lowercase, but it looks like that's the only thing that is changing there. So what we're going to do is uh, over here in the IDE, you can see that we're importing a few modules. We don't really need to use these. It just automatically uh, auto-generates those two, um, but we're probably not going to need them for this challenge. Uh, so, oh, someone already finished it. <laughs> that's that's uh, They're quick on this, but we're probably going to take the full 10 minutes because we're going to talk it through and, and, and kind of explain what's going on. So uh, the and that we're getting here looks like how many rows there are to the picture. And then for I and range N, it's giving us that row. So that row is a string, right? So there's a string of characters here. And we really don't want to replace, we really don't want to change any of the uh, characters except for these O's, which are, which are the I's, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to say we're we're collecting this row and then we're going to print. Um, actually, I think what I want to do is for. There's a couple of different ways I could do this. Uh, so let's let's print row, and we can do, but we can replace. Now let's let's do it differently. Let's do for j in row. So what that's going to do is it's going to iterate over every character in the string 
over every single character in the string, it's going to, it's going to look at it one by one. And then it's going to, um, and then the, the, the colon here says, okay, here's what I want you to do for each one of those, um, for each one of those characters in the string. So what I want it to do is if it's, uh, if it's an O, I want it to print an X. And I, again, I don't know if it's lowercase or uppercase. I think it's uppercase. Let's see. So if it's a, let's try, let's try uppercase. So if it's a O, I want it to print an X. Uh, and actually, I don't want it to stop there. I want it to do end equals and then empty because it, that's not finishing the line. Normally, Python would finish a line at, with a print statement, but I'm putting in end equals empty string in order to make sure that it's not going to finish the line. It's just going to go to the next character. And then uh, else, I just want it to print J and end equals empty string. And then uh, at the end of all of the characters of that row, I need it to print. I, I need to have just an empty print statement so that it goes to the next line. So let's see if this works. OK, no, it didn't work because what it expected was. Hmm. Oh, let's see. I'll do O. Let's try lower cases, see what that does. Uh, that doesn't do it either. So what I could do, let me comment these out for a second. And just have it print what it's giving me, because I'm I'm curious what the so print row. What's it giving me? Okay, so it's giving me this cat. But for each character, what am I doing wrong here? So for J in row. Oh. OK, I know what I'm doing wrong. OK, so for J in row, if J is that character. So I had to I had to connect what I'm iterating with what I'm checking for. So if J is that character, then I want it to print that. And I'm going to go back to caps again because I think that's what it was. Okay, and then let's try it again. All right, so now it's looking better. But so so this is the output that it gave. So it's looking better, but this line where we're supposed to make our change, it found the open eyes, but it expected the closed eyes. So I think that could be because these are actually lowercase. So let's check for lowercase. And there we go. Okay, so those were those were lowercase, not uppercase. That was the that was the issue. All right. So now let's play all test cases and see if there's any. Okay, so that's all it was. So you can see that. Uh, there was really only one thing we had. To, I'm going to submit now. Uh, are there any questions before I before I submit? I know that was like uh, just sort of me talking out loud. Um, but but these are the these are the clashes. And uh, again, what's cool about it is that you get to see what other people uh, share as their code. So somebody else might have solved this differently than how I did. What do you guys think? <laughs> Did I like totally lose you on this? Uh, I know you, you might not have much background in syntax yet. All right, so I'm gonna, I'll submit here and share my code. Now, I, I wanna just sort of set expectations. I, I had spent, probably three months or so before I could finish any of these clashes. Like they, they, it, it's even with somebody explaining what's happening, it's, it's kind of tough. Um, so if you click view code, you can see 
what the other person did. And that kind of gives you um, a, a way forward because you can learn new code. You can see how other people solve that problem. And it's like right on the spot. So it's after you just tried to solve the problem that you get that feedback. So that, that can be really helpful. Um, but these, these for loops, like that's one of the, that's one of the main things that, um, that you're going to do with these kind of puzzles is, is usually like for loops. You might have some while loops. You'll have a lot of conditionals like these, if else. So, uh, you know, again, just to recap, if it was an O, if it was an, a cat with open eyes, uh, then we just change that to an X. So print X instead. And then otherwise we just want to print the character as it was. All right. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, I understand what uh, it encourages level, but uh, as you said, I'm still used into the syntax. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so which which terms are you familiar with, and which terms uh, have you not used before? Have you used uh, the if else statements? Or uh, I am not yet at the else statement. Okay. All right. So so let's um, let's kind of back up to. So I I definitely think coding game is is a great place to practice and and spend some time. But that's again that's something that you're going to have to do, um, you know, for a while before it starts to click, right? So, uh, it. Uh, Sebastian, you've got a little bit more experience with coding. Were you able to follow along with what I was doing there or was that still kind of confusing? No, it, it actually, I, well, I, I saw a little bit. It really wasn't confusing. You explained pretty well, but my Zoom call, it's lagging. So I, it was constantly cutting off and cutting off and then I literally got gotcha. picked out like three or four times. <laughs> I do apologize for that. Um, no, 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 that's okay. Uh, that's okay. I, yeah, I was paying attention to what you were doing, but uh, I I'm trying to get it on my side. I'm not longer doing it on my laptop. I'm doing it on like school's computer because it's faster. It's a like Wi-Fi doesn't cut off in there. But gotcha. I'm on the website right now, and I'm I'm not so sure where to go or how to like join your guys's um event or group. Gotcha. Okay, so uh, you know what I could do is I could actually send you a link. So I'm gonna play again, and uh, I I can send a link. So I'm going to put this now in the in the chat. Uh, here you go. Yeah, oh, that'd I, be great. Oh, you know what? I, I I'm not sure awesome. if it's going to let you in. I think I think it might I think it might be too late. It might have closed. Uh, see if you can get into that. Well, there. Does it does it say that it's already closed? Mm -hmm. It's just a white screen so far. Okay. So this one's the shortest mode. There's really no uh, time restriction on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and clash on this one. And uh, so it says A, B, and C are three non-negative integers. So non-negative meaning it could be zero or it could be one, two, and, and so on. So non-negative integers, A, B, and C. And it says, uh, you will create a division where the numerator is the maximum value of A, B, C, and the denominator is the minimum value of A, B, C. OK, so uh, if the denominator is equal to 0, replace it with a 1. The inputs have been chosen such that the numerator will always be divisible by the denominator. And so the result. Uh, I think it's a, I think it means so will the result. Uh, and then we have to return the result. So A, B, and C uh, are going to be non-negative numbers. And then we have to find the numerator and denominator, where the numerator is the maximum value of A, B, and C. OK. So whichever whichever one's bigger, A, B, or C, that's what we're going to use. That's what they mean for that. So um, what we can do is we could say, uh, let's say numerator equals max of A, B, and C. I think we can fit three arguments into that. 
um, but we might need uh, we might need to do this twice with two arguments. I don't remember if max takes uh, more than two. And then the denominator will equal the minimum of A, B, C. Yeah, so maximum being the biggest, minimum being the smallest, and then uh, and then actually it's gonna need to be one as well. So I'm gonna include one in there because um, remember that it can't be a zero. It has to be at least a one for the denominator. Otherwise we would get undefined. So we need to have at least a one as our denominator. And then it says uh, the inputs have been chosen so that the numerator will always be divisible by the denominator and so will the result. So return the result. So uh, I'm still, even though it's always divisible, I'm still gonna, uh, I'm still gonna return it as an integer. So it's gonna be numerator divided by denominator. And let's see if that works. Okay, so that didn't work. What did I, what did I do wrong here? So it's supposed to be the max max value divided by the min value, right? Create a division where the numerator is the maximum value of a, b, and c. The denominator is the minimum value of a, b, and c. If the denominator is equal to zero, replace it by one. The inputs have been chosen, so the numerator will always be divisible. Hmm. Okay. So it found four. Let's have it just print A, B, and C so we can see what, what we're working with here. So four, two, and three. And so it's expecting two. So numerator. And you know what? Let me actually um, shorten this too. We don't need to type that whole thing as numerator out and denominator. We don't need to type that whole thing as denominator out. So n divided by d. And it's doing four point. Oh, it's because of this one. Okay, that's what the. That's why. Okay, so that one is throwing me off because it's actually the minimum. That's. It's okay to put one into the max function, but if I put it in as the min, then we got a problem. So uh, what I need to do is put this as a max of D or one. And that should work now. No, it didn't because it's not an integer. I got to change that to an integer. Okay, so now I try it and it worked. All right, so I'm gonna do all these test cases. So. What it's doing is it's taking the maximum of A, B, and C, and it's storing that as N. It's taking the minimum of A, B, and C. It's storing that as the denominator. And then I want to take that um, N divided by D and uh, print it out. But there's a little caveat because I can't use, if D is zero, I don't want to use it. So that's why I'm doing max of D or one here, because if D is zero, I don't want to use D, I want to use one, right? Because that was the constraint up here. If the denominator is equal to zero, replace it by a one. So that's why I'm making uh, this denominator here, not just, the not just the variable D, but I'm making it the max of D or one. And I also had to make this an integer because you notice that when I had 2.0, it didn't take that as the answer. It wanted it as an integer. So I'm, I'm forcing it to be an integer here. Um, and th th so there it goes. Now, this is not one of those, um, uh, not one of the puzzles where whoever turns it in the fastest wins. This is whoever has the minimum code size. So we have to make this as small as possible. So I'm getting rid of all these extra comments. We don't need those. And uh, here's a little trick that you can use. Um, you can say int, input, and max. Those are commands. We can change those to, um, uh, let's say maybe i, p, and m. 
and so um oops i have this backwards so what i'm doing is instead of typing the command integer i'm replacing it with an i instead of typing out the command input i'm replacing it with a p instead of typing out the word max i'm re replacing it with an m and then here i'm going to have i and then p i'm going to do that for all these so that's going to shorten our code a bit Uh, so instead of having to write out the word input, I've now replaced that command with the letter P. Um, and I'm getting rid of all the spaces, as you can see as well. Oop, I forgot to do something for, um, let me change this for X and I'll change this for M because I also have minimum. So this is actually x and this is actually minimum and then a max is just x this is just i and this is just p okay so i think i've it's now kind of unreadable i can't really make sense of this anymore but uh i've made it so that um every, all of my commands and all of my variables are only a single letter. So that should give me the smallest code size that I can get with this way of doing it. You can see that some other people figured out how to write it with smaller code size. So maybe that person will share with us, maybe not. You know, we'll see, see if they could find a more efficient way, but I'm gonna play test this again and just make sure that all of those work. And yes, they do work. Notice that I'm getting an error. It says um, that it's, because uh, uh, I'm using input and I'm not inputting anything, but it, if um, if it says success, which which it does on these, then then you're good because input also does a print, and so that's why I'm sort of shortcutting this so that it's uh, giving me a line. It's giving me a line of output, and it's expecting some input, and I'm not giving it the input, so it sort of has an error, but it still it still works well enough that it's gonna it's gonna let it through. So that's gonna be the minimum code size I get for this one. I go ahead and post it, and I'm gonna share my code. All right, so let's see how this guy who had shorter code, let's see, look at that. He did it in two lines. And that's often what happens in these, um, uh, in these contests. There's like a really efficient way to do it. And uh, so that, that's why I say like, as you do these more and more, you're gonna see how other coders would do it. And it gives you access to commands that you might not have thought of. So this is saying a star equals map int open and so I, you know, I, I may not be familiar with those commands. What I can do is I can go over here and just Google the docs about what those, what those mean. So I go to Python open. So now I can look at the documentation for open function. So what does open do? So it opens a file and prints the, well, you can open the file and then you can print the, con the content in that file. So we can demo this, we can run it. So there's a file, demo file.txt that this is, well, it's supposed to do, but that's all right. So anyway, so it gives you the syntax. So it's open and then it's expecting the file and then the mode. So what does file and mode mean? That's the path and the name of the file. And then mode is a string, uh, define which mode you want to open the file. So do you want to write? Do you want to read? Do you want to append? Do you want to create? And it gives you some examples. So you, you can, uh, this is a, a site that I use a lot, W3Schools. Um, they're, they're often there for the top searches, but there's also, you can go directly to the, to the Python docs over here. And slowly but surely, you're going to be expanding your vocabulary as you keep doing these clash of codes. So it doesn't happen overnight. Again, like I said, it took three months of looking up commands that I see other people using before I felt like I had any ability to solve these puzzles. And you can see now I'm getting these puzzles in you know, 10 minutes or so, uh, 15 minutes or so. 
Uh, sometimes some of these puzzles I can even solve in like two or three minutes, but it was not like that when I first started. Uh, it, it took several months before, you know, I, I knew enough syntax that I was able to solve them. Uh, but I guess the thing that makes me so excited about coding game is that you have a way to get the practice that you need in, in short bite-sized pieces. So you don't have to spend hours and hours all at once doing code. You could just do whenever you have 15 minutes, just jump on co uh, Clash of Code and uh, get a little bit of practice in. And I, I don't really know any shortcut to becoming a, a fluent in code, but that's that's how I did it. Um, so any uh, any questions for me? Um, maybe, maybe uh, Stephen or uh, Stefan, you, you guys might have uh, some some input on how you learned how to code. Like uh, any tips that you want to share that would maybe speed up the process. As you were before, you mentioned W three schools. I just sent you an email about W three schools because that's what I used. Yeah, there. So there's a lot of tutorials and stuff too, and. Uh, you know, you definitely want to mix and match, like spending time on on sites like W three Schools. Um, uh, there's video tutorials and things like that, but you have to combine that with the practice too. And that's why I like to show Code and Game because that that's where that's one of the places you can get a lot of practice. Yeah, Sebastian, go ahead. Um, so basically, what I think, like, to be able to manage to get to like code at that level or like become better at coding i think it's more of a um, practice and failure like you're going to fail you're going to but you're going to lay, learn from all your failures and the best way to really go on about this is to just do it i mean I think it's like like this website coding game like it's literally based of a website like you're literally coding in a website to like make a game like i see but they have a lot of games here. So make it like fun, yeah. make it interesting, and it's okay to fail. It's, it's pretty, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So actually, let me give you guys a little bit of a tour of uh, of the website. So um, I've, I've been, I spent like hundreds of hours playing games on this thing now because instead of, um, you know, playing Dota or uh, StarCraft or, you know, some of the games that I used to play way too much of, um, you play those kind of games, you don't really come away with anything, right? You don't learn any skill that can that's transferable. But when you're playing coding game, like you can play and play and yeah. play, and you just get better at coding. And so, like that's that's what I think is so awesome about it. So, uh, yeah. I'll show you, I'll show you some of these that I, um, you know, he was mentioning the games. Like these are, are you guys able to see? Uh, these are all the games that I've, I've actually played all these games. <laughs> so, so um, let, let's go, let's go to my my code for just one of these things. So um, are you guys able to see that code on the on the right side there? Uh, I've got, you know, not even that much code. It's just uh, like a couple hundred lines of code. Yeah. <laughs> uh, some, some functions of like um, how I decide where I'm going to send units, uh, how I'm going to upgrade units, or uh, how I'm going to upgrade factories, uh, things like that. And I collect all the inputs, put them into uh, dictionaries and put those dictionaries into lists and then uh, you know eventually you get you get something like this so this is uh hopefully it's going to win but i might i might lose this one we'll see i think i'm i got his i got one of his factories so oh uh, yeah i think i'm so yeah the small maps my my bot does not do good on um so th that's that's one of them that's uh that's called ghost in the shell that one's pretty fun um, there's another one that I spent, uh, way, way too much time on, which was spring challenge 2022. This is the first one. I actually got to gold league on this one. And, uh, again, you know, I, I, after many hours, this is like hundreds of lines of code to get my bots to do everything I want them to do. Uh, but it works. And so we'll go ahead and play the computer. Sometimes I win, sometimes they win. It, it's, it's sort of a toss up. Uh, but you'll see how this works. So let me full screen this. So uh, you've got three units and one acts kind of like a goalie. And then these other two go out and they kill spiders. And every time you hit a spider, uh, you're, you're getting mana. So the mana is used to 
cast spells. You can see I'm, I'm pushing them back with a wind spell and uh, trying to keep them out of my goal. Eventually, once I have enough mana, they're going to go over, they're going to start mind controlling these spiders and sending them over to the base. And then they're going to try to push them in. This guy, yeah, so he's, he's trying to push these in now. And he's going to put a, he's going to put a, sh a shield spell. Oh, no. He, okay, they beat me. So you guys can see, like, you can spend way too much time uh, building this, but it, it's it's really fun. Like, it's it's a uh, it's actually like a legit game here. Um, they have some that are like Pac-Man as well. Uh, let me go over here and find like a Pac-Man. Jesse, thing. yeah, can you hear me? Hi, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, I just have a real question. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is it is it possible to connect a coding game with uh like let's say like my GitHub GitHub account account and like um have them connect to each other yeah. with each other? Yeah. So uh, all of these games, like let me go to um, uh, this is like a Hearthstone sort of a game. So it's like a card game, and uh, actually every one of these games, uh, just about uh, if not all of them have a, a GitHub. Um, uh, link where you're able to go and look at the source file for that game. So if you want to start making games, like you can study the source file on here and, you know, you can create your own games and, and upload them to code and game. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. So it's not necessary to go into GitHub and, and to, uh, to be familiar with GitHub in order to get started. So I, I like that that barrier to entry, you know, it doesn't, doesn't get in the way of complete beginners starting. Um, but, and, and you can, you can start at like really low level. Uh, you're going to start in the wood league and it doesn't ask you to do very much. It's like a really, really simple bot will be able to win. Uh, so sometimes I've added only a couple lines of code and that's been sufficient. So I'll give you an example of that. Um, with the, the first one that they introduce you to is, um, Where's my, oh, okay. I need to move a window here. Okay, so if you go to uh, the very first bot, it's Mad Pod Racing. And I didn't really find this one to be super fun, but like some people love this one. And uh, so they made it like the introductory AI bot that they that they start you with. And I, I have like not even really 10 lines of code. I only added a couple lines of code here and uh, and that was it, so. Let me just, I'll just copy this and oh, wow. restart it. So this is what it, this is what it starts you with. This, this is the beginning code here. And all I did was this, and that was good enough to get to silver league. <laughs> so like it, sometimes it does not take very much to get, to get started with these. Um, but you know, you can take it really far because uh, some of these people that are in the gold and the legend league for this game, they're using things like genetic algorithms. They're using like really advanced kinds of algorithms to be able to solve these and uh, increase their scores. And so you can take it as far as you want to go, but as a beginner, you don't have to know that stuff to get started in the lower leagues. So you can get on the leaderboard and, and just progress as far as you, as you want on at your own pace. All right. So uh, we're, we're coming up on 1155 here. Um, what I want to do on Monday, uh, and and by uh, uh, next week, hopefully, like when we do the online um, meeting next week, we'll have this sorted out. But there is a um, uh, let me see. I'm going to stop share here for a second. Uh, there is a. Thing we have to fill out for Palm Beach State and I probably brought it up on edge maybe I don't know uh, well anyway there's some paperwork that we have to do for uh, uh, the club in order to make it like an official club and so uh, you know we'll get all that sorted out and make sure that we're um, on engaged and everything like that so uh, hopefully we'll get more people coming to this and, and definitely tell your friends about it and uh, hopefully we can get lots and lots of people learning how to code. Jesse, quick question. Yes. Is it possible to invite people that um, 
aren't exactly going to this campus, like, and maybe they aren't even my college per se, because I have a friend, and also my brother. I kind of like to invite my brother, who's like really into coding. Yeah, you know, I'd like to meet him. Um, I, I, I think we don't really have the same barrier to, uh, uh with Zoom that we have for the in person. Uh, so, so that wouldn't bother me. Uh, are there, are there any objections or? You know, I, I guess I may have to look through the paperwork and if that's prohibited, then that's prohibited. But, uh, you know, as, as far as I know, that's fine. All right. Awesome. All right, cool. Uh, so I'll, I'll go ahead and close this one out uh, for today and I'll see you guys next time.